Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to install a high availability RabbitMQ cluster on Kubernetes. I'm going to install a cluster using the RabbitMQ cluster Kubernetes operator and the RabbitMQ topology Kubernetes operator. The RabbitMQ cluster operator provides a consistent and easy way to deploy and run RabbitMQ on Kubernetes. The RabbitMQ messaging topology operator supports managing RabbitMQ messaging topology objects such as exchanges, queues and so on through the Kubernetes declarative API. In my case, I am going to use it to configure the HA policy for queues and exchanges. Let's begin the installation with the cluster operator. Of course, before starting, you need to fulfill the prerequisites. After that, copy the kubectl apply command and execute it in your terminal. Check that the cluster operator has been installed and is running. By default, it has been installed in the reptmq-system namespace. Let's move on and install the Kubernetes topology operator. There are two options for installing the operator. Install with cert manager, install generated certificates. Without a cert manager installed, you will need to generate certificates yourself. I am not going to do it, so let's install cert manager. The installation is pretty straightforward. Copy the kubectl apply command with the manifest and execute it. After the installation has been completed, check that the cert manager is running. We are ready to install the topology operator. The installation process is the same. Copy and execute the command. Check that the topology operator is running. Good. Before deploying the RabbitMQ cluster, we need to prepare persistent volumes. I'm going to use the local volume type. Local volumes can only be used as a statically created persistent volume. Dynamic provisioning is not supported. When using local volumes, it's recommended to create a storage class with a volume binding mode set to wait for first consumer. For more details, see the local storage class example. Deploy the storage class on the cluster. Second, deploy the PVs. I've already prepared the manifests. I attached the link to the files from the video in the description. Each manifest differs only in the PV name and the node name in the node affinity section. Before deploying, you should create directories on each node where UPVs will be created. Good. Deploy the persistent volumes. List the PVs. They are available for use. Finally, deploy the RabbitMQ cluster. I have prepared the manifest before too. On top, I set links to the official documentation for additional reading. A RabbitMQ cluster will be deployed with three replicas. I've added the toleration section because I have only three nodes, one master and two workers, so I need to tolerate the taints on the master node. I've added pod and affinity to assign pods to different nodes. My resource requests and limits are for non-production environments. By the way, there is the section secret backend where I redefine some values stored in the RabbitMQ secret. This structure is presented in the official documentation on GitHub. In the secret, there is a default username and password. In the ingress manifest, there is a host for the RabbitMQ user interface. To open the UI, you have to install the ingress controller. You can watch my videos about KeepAlifeD plus HA proxy or the video on how to deploy the ingress nginx controller with MetalLB. Lastly, in the hapolicy.yml file, there is a policy for queues and exchanges for high availability. Let's deploy the manifests one by one, starting from the secret manifest. Create the namespace. Apply the secret. Apply the cluster. Apply the ingress. Apply the policy. Wait while the RabbitMQ pods are starting. I need to add the domain rabbitmq.example.com to the etc host file to open it. Open the UI to check everything works fine. Enter the login and password. There are three nodes in the cluster. In the policies there is one policy that we've created. We haven't created any queues yet. Let's do it. I've prepared a simple script to publish some messages to the RabbitMQ queue. Furthermore, I've prepared a deployment to run the script. You can see that one queue has appeared. There are some messages in it. Everything works smoothly. That's it. We've deployed a high availability RabbitMQ cluster and sent some messages to the queue. I hope this video was helpful to you. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. See you. Goodbye.